Good afternoon again from Yami B TV. Just a quick message of a purposeful nature. Um, looking at programs last night, I came across some real old stuff from comparing, you know, the way things are done back then to now, uh, especially with the sense of belonging and the brutality and the treatment and the change in the system. I had a real good look. I haven't done that for a while and my memory was refreshed and I was blaming today's generation of the way it is run now, like you've got more of an easy run to get away with and run around in prison like it's a playground. In the old days, you couldn't do that. But in the beginning of time, the brutality that you would suffer at the hands of discipline ways of the system dealing with prisoners who run riot, who feel like it's a playground. You will get harsh treatment and you will get a hiding. And there wasn't video cameras to follow you everywhere so that when you put in the complaints after, there'd be nothing to back up what you say. Everybody would have covered their tracks from the doctor to your injuries to who was there. The door would be pushed up. Everybody would be locked away while you get your beating. So when you make your complaint, there's no pro there's no proof so that they could get away with everything. But then when more damaging stuff happened, uh, there's an overhaul of change in the regime and how things are going to be run, you know, when they came with a basic standard uh, enhanced and the privileged schemes of hanging the carrots and uh, giving you TVs, giving you phones in your cells, make it, making it easier to keep in contact with the outside world, which wasn't a bad thing. But blaming the new generation, me now, because of the brutality and the stuff that they got away with back in the day, led to the change in what it is today. So is it a double-edged sword? Did they have, were they forced to change because lives were lost and complaints went missing and people used to be on the ghost train getting traveled around and getting, you know, people were knocking on gates, visiting their people and not being allowed in and being allowed to get away with it. And every single time you make a complaint, it's, a black mark against you, you get treated a little bit worse by the staff in there. This is where the us versus them develops from way back. I'm looking at the uniforms and the state of the clothing, like the black shoes and the trousers didn't fit me. And someone was talking about the maroon jumper the other day and, you know, looking like a real prisoner, you know, completely different today. You can walk around in the trainers, your tracksuits looking all like you're outside. Uh, like it gives you that that fresh feeling of not being in prison. So is that a good thing or a bad thing? I twisted it all around. I've got so many regrets to tell you all as time goes on. And you know that I say that the, the, the never give in attitude that brought me to my knees uh, at some stages where I had to fight back to try because I understood that I was conditioned to behave in a way that I believed would be accepted with my peers and the sense of belonging. Now, how many times do you see that when all these stories come out about names from the past that are built on reputations, how reputations are built is that you would have had to have been part of that incident that took place inside there so if i went and done something and he was there and he was there and he, you go down in folklore as uh being there at a time when something of such magnitude or something that you get ratings for it's going to be remembered by many in the future and your name is going to get called somewhere even if he wasn't in the directly involved is that you were part of it so you become legendary status this is most some reputations are built on false um pretenses and um for me to come and tell you that i wasted and wasted 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 life in that knowing that i'm hopelessly lost in a way that i've been brought up and taught to believe that you know i'm labeled as institutionalized as you know not really of value or, or the problem to say uh, that needs fixing and the fixing becomes institutionalized and 
prison sentence after prison sentence and getting to know us and them and you know all the faces along the way knowing where the safer bets are and when you want to get involved with uh crowd choosing the winners in the system who appear to be the hierarchy ones who have got the most respect and about how did they feel about having to play that role and lead on forever and ever how is it possible to change a lifetime of thinking and behaviors and attitudes from for a lifetime of 10 20 30 40 years of doing the same thing over and over again and certain spirits stay alive because they know that it wasn't true that's why some of them are here today to tell the story some can't because they got lost and they got brainwashed and they got mental health they got damaged and they got destroyed by the early part of the system but for those who think that a sense of belonging in that direction, you know, because your name could be brought down in folklore or history 10, 20, 30 years of life, if you get to live that long, that means it's going to have some kind of purpose to what I'm doing now, trying to remind you all that, look what a fool I was for only taking 30, 40 years to finally work out that, you didn't belong there in the first place. You didn't really like doing what you want, what you did. You did it because you was a crowd pleaser. You did it because you wanted to be part of and you wanted to be accepted and you wanted to be rated, but you was running from yourself, which is what a lot of individuals do when they feel like there's no other place to go. It's as simple as that. You're going to grab onto the nearest piece of uh, what else? Where do I? Where where can I go if I'm not accepted there, or I'm taught that I'm, you know, that's going to hinder me because I was I'm I'm bought to train, I'm bought up in institutions. I come from a broken home. Uh, this happened to me. I did this to somebody once, so that labels you, and you know, you're almost looked at like a the scourge of the earth. No matter about it, so much the crimes, they're just. Uh, there's just a list of the top, the worstest to the to the least worstest, but they're all terrible by way of nature because there was always somebody that had to pay uh, because of our beliefs in that sense of belonging and attitudes and behaviours towards what we thought of ourselves really uh, to project project it on the bigger stage that I want to be remembered too. I'm wondering because we're troublemakers. The ones that stood out are the ones that wanted to be part of and be the major name calling where your name is called when incidents have happened. This is how you got your reputations. It's all made up because you wanted to be there. That I used to feel sometimes like if someone says, yeah, I was there. He, yeah, he did that bit. I he did it, but he did do. But then I'm thinking, oh, no, I didn't. Yeah, but I was there, but I didn't. So, oh, yeah, 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 but you didn't really do nothing. And it, it almost makes you feel like, oh, shit, I didn't work part of it then, really. My, mem my memory, so you're thinking, well, next time it happens, I want to be, you know, accepted into that crowd where he for a right and he for a left. I put my bit in and that bit in, all for the sake of that that life and, and what we're led to believe that it, when now we're seeing there's a lot of sad souls, minds broken, my heart's broken, I ain't ashamed to tell you. Uh, that I have to fight every single day, that I have to be grateful to have even reached this stage to tell you that the sense of belonging would be your family and doing good and you know achievements and setting those goals and targets that uh, gonna you're gonna be remembered for good stuff and 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 people will call your name is oh he helped me i remember you know we were talking this morning me and my nephew and top boys jasmine who's in there who's gone clear now who's, who's, whose life is, is 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 she's a film star and a great one and two but you know the story is that it was uncle yami that noticed her when she was a kid and said to her look i believe that she's got the talent and the thing and i took her by the hand and brought her somewhere uh, a project and said look I think she's got what it takes and blah 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 she never looked back and it worked out for her you see and I trust that God looks after me for acts of 
uh, give him back and help him when you see signs of talent spotting, if you like. You know, I believe in the Father in Heaven for, for some of my badness. I've got my punishment to go with the stuff that I did, but I'm getting rewarded and still get to say a piece because there were some good deeds that I did, the Queen's pardon, you know, things like that. Times when I could have overdone it, maybe. Times when I had a bit of heart, when I didn't really want to, you know, overdo it. He knows what you're thinking and what your intention is. This is how it works, I believe. That the intention is what matters the most in your heart while you're committing the actions. Nobody's beyond redemption uh, before you start on this, this supposed life of... <laughs> you know, go to jail, make money, make new links and build up, you You know, wear all the nice stuff and all the big cars and then there's another bit you want after that and another bit after that and being known here, there and everywhere. All we ever known throughout all those years is that deep down that everybody was always jealous of, you, of the bigger ones, the ones that were in a better place, but you would all pretend to love each other and all the respects would be there because they were up there the same way as you because you could do the fight and you could had the money, you had the speech, you had the charisma, you had all the those things to go with, to be with, part of the hierarchy of the top of the game in the cafes where you stand out the most. But there are many, many men that did that, had all of that and more, and never had to do a day's bad work in there ever, and never saw fit need to, because they probably worked out that they didn't, they wished that they never ever set out on the journey in the first place. Uh, that shows you the difference in the self-esteem and what we really thought about ourselves. Stomachs still clinging uh, to the stuff of the past that, that made us, you know, some have to come up and tell the stories as deterrents and preventions and to frighten and give them the odd little nudge and, you know, that it's not as easy as that. So I was going to give you a quick message. I'll be coming up with more messages like this over the next few weeks uh, about what I'm really trying to say. And... You know, my messages for today is that sense of belonging. Uh, make it, never give up, ever, never. Down, out, down for a day, look like you're taking a step backwards. There's always a way if you've done. Look at all the things that you've done when you've been down and out and you came through. Just because you had a couple of bad days and it didn't go and it looks like that familiar feeling of sinking, it doesn't mean that. You have to go all the way back down. No, it doesn't. You remember what got you up. And to give, get, keep those strengths that you remembered that got you through those dark times and remembered how you did it. Like how I have to remember when I was all but finished and done and how I got up and what did I do and how, where did I find it? You know, you grab onto it. This is how you build up toughness of spirit and the believing, especially in the higher power, uh, the Father in heaven. Uh, but sending loads of love. I'm in the mood today. I'm going to be coming up with more stuff later on.